Hey folks, it's Chad here, Airstream in Greensboro, and behind me I have the all-new 2024 Airstream Flying Cloud 25 front bed. Now this is the full walkthrough, so I'm going to go into a lot of detail about this camper. If you're looking for more of a short video, we do have that, and I'll link that above. You can go check that out. That's got Laura, my wife, in it. So you can see some of her impressions of the inside, and of course we do the outside as well. Now we're gonna jump into a full walk of the inside the outside. We're gonna show you the top and the bottom. Now, one thing I do wanna mention before we take off into the walk around is, if you are in the market for Airstream, you can buy your Airstream from me and we will give you the best price possible here at Airstream at Greensboro. So make sure you go down in the description, grab that phone number or email and shoot me a contact on what you're interested in, what you're looking for, and I'll shoot you a price right back, okay? All right, let's jump into a walk around of the 2024 Airstream Flying Cloud 25 front bed now. So we're at the front of the 25 foot flying cloud and yes, this is gonna look pretty much similar with all of your Airstreams that are out there for the most part. Now your storage is gonna be a little bit different depending on if you're a front bed or rear bed or queen bed. So we got the 3,500 pound powered ton jack that does come standard and pretty much comes standard on e everything the Airstream is delivering now, even the base camps and the Bamies are all getting this powered ton jack. And we also have the Demco easy hitching system. And I will say, I love this system. You actually leave it down when you're uh, hitching and you actually see this pop up a little bit as it goes around the ball and then it will set back down like it is now. And that tells you that it's latched. And somehow with the geometry of how this thing's made, it cannot come back up or off unless you open it like that. So it's a really cool system. I really like it. Um, super easy to use. And then we're gonna have inside of here, your two 30 pound propane tanks. There isn't an easy way to know which which one of these is full or which is empty. Um, what I generally will do is leave one off and have one on. So once the one runs out, I know I'm down to uh, one propane tank and I'll need to go fill the other one. And that's generally how I do it. That's the easiest way to do it, I think. But you do have an auto transfer here, so you can set this to transfer over to the uh, other propane tank when the first one runs out and I'll automatically do that for you. And then behind that, we're going to have the optional 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. These are the Battleborn batteries. They are heated as well. There's a little switch on this side here that you can turn on to heat those so they're able to charge even in colder conditions. Now, this is a 2024, so it also has the new 2000 watt inverter, and that is why these cables have gotten significantly thicker over last year's uh, 2023 model. And there is a breaker here or a fuse for the inverter as well. Uh, that's an option. You can get the uh, Flying Cloud without batteries and with solar only, or you can get it with no solar. So basically no solar, solar, and then your third option is solar with lithium batteries. And then this is the twin bed model. So with it being the twin bed model, we're gonna have the front storage on the 25 foot, if you opt for the queen bed, you're not gonna have the storage in the front. You're just gonna have the storage on the uh, campsite side. And then this has the two ACs as well. So you're gonna have the 50 amp power cable here, which is significantly larger than the 30 if you have the single AC. So there's not an option to do the 50 amp power unless you go for two ACs. Now, right below Right here, you're going to have your quick disconnect for your propane that will allow you to hook up things like uh, grills, you know, heaters, whatever you might want to hook up to that. And then on the other side, you're going to have the Zamp solar connection connection to be able to add a solar, um, like a suitcase solar with a charge controller on it. And you have the internal solar as well. And then underneath the front here is where you're gonna find that spare tire. And Laura will have to go down and show you that. And it's it's fairly easy to actually drop that down. There's just a pin that you pull and then it will actually set down and allow you to pull it out. And then she can pan over and show you that heavy duty stabilizer that comes on the Flying Cloud. Now that is a manual stabilizer, but you can easily turn that into a 
power stabilizer with a drill and a socket, which is what I do, and it works very well. Now, here in the front, you're gonna have these rock guards. This is gonna be stainless steel. Now, this is just a sticker tape that's covering this for protection and travel uh, when they deliver it to us, but we take this off before we sell it to you, and you'll see the stainless steel behind it. But behind that, it's gonna be your aluminum. So this is much stronger is why it's here, but it's also easy to replace this versus actually replacing this aluminum. And then this solar guard here is also a solar and rock guard protecting that window that's behind it. It is a strong polymer, so it can take a little bit of a beating. And then this middle solar guard here will open. So this comes up and then this will allow you to open the center window when you want to open it. Now, this is the only window that opens that you need to open the outer solar guard before you can open the inside window. The other ones will just open on their own, like you just open them. There's nothing, nothing stopping those. And then if you want to open the outer solar guards to clean, you're gonna use these screws here and it's really just a quarter turn. You're a quarter turn that with a screwdriver and you can open these outer solar guards when you're cleaning your unit or if you wanna clean the windows, anything like that. Now moving around to the campsite side, of course we have the awning and what we call the caravan set up. And what this does is lets the awning be out but further or closer to the camper. So you can get another one, another Airstream much closer. So if you're doing the what, wagon, wheel. wagon wheel, if you're doing the wagon wheel, this is how you're gonna set your awning up so that you're able to have your awning out. Uh, now up here, you're gonna have your other storage. So there's three outer storage compartments. This is gonna be the one that's on the campsite side. And then you have your tankless hot water heater. So this is a Girard tankless hot water heater. Um, what I can tell you about this is there are people who love it and there are people who hate it. It is tankless, it's on demand. So when you ask for water, it's when it's gonna give it to you. There's a power switch here. This is for winterization, but it's also good for storage. You can turn this system off so that it doesn't even try to run off a battery when you have no propane or the propane is turned off. And a little door there. And moving a little bit forward, you're gonna have your outside 110 power connection right there so you can't plug things in. Now this is not on the inverter, so you will need to be plugged into shore power for that to work. Now on your tires and wheels, you're gonna have from Airstream Goodyears, these are the Endurance tires, so they are made in America. They're ST22575R15, so it's a 15 inch wheel. Now this is connected to the Dexter torsion axle. Now the Dexter torsion axle, Laura's gonna kinda look underneath so you can see it. It's a square tube with a square tube inside of it. And around that square tube are um, rubber co cords. And the rubber cords are actually your shocks. That's what's acting as your shock, but there's no leaf springs, there's no metal leaf springs or anything like that. This is gonna ride much better than if you're used to traveling with a normal travel trailer setup that has leaf springs. And then Airstream also opts on the flying cloud to give you the damper shock as well. So you don't always necessarily get that when you're getting the Dexter axle, but Airstream gives that to you. So not only are you gonna get a better ride, but you're also gonna have that damper shock. Now these are four independent tires. And what that means is as you're going down the road, if you can think of, show my hands, if you can think of a normal axle, if this wheel goes down, the, all, the, side, the other, the opposite side, that wheel's gotta go up and then vice versa. So it's always doing this when you're going down the road with a truly independent suspension those can tires can go up and down as they need to so if this one needs to move up and down it can do that without affecting the other side and that's the big benefit to the dexter axle the kind of fun fact on the dexter axle uh, to go on the around the world caravan that airstream did in the 50s or 60s whichever one they did it but they went all the way around the world um, the requirement was to have the torsion axle. You could not have a leaf spring. So if you had a leaf spring, you had to go get that changed to a torsion axle. So kind of fun fact. Now we've got the aluminum steps that come with Airstream. I really like these steps. I think they work great. Um, they're fairly easy to put up and I'll show you the trick to that. So you wanna fold it up and then fold this top step. So you kind of think you're always trying to, you're always trying to have this top step to face up. So if I'm gonna bring it out, I'm wanting it to face up. So I'm gonna rotate it around so it faces up. 
and then to put this step away, it's gonna be one motion that you're gonna pull back and then one motion forward and up. So you're gonna get forward and up, so like this. So pull it back so it unlatches and then forward and up. Do that one more time. So pull it back so it unlatches and forward, up, one motion, that easy. And then we can bring it back out and our steps are ready to go. And we do have the manual awning on the flying cloud and I'll demonstrate this really quick. So I had it in the caravan position. So showing this side, when you first bring it down, your support arm is gonna be in the position I call home. So I'll be down here, you're gonna take your left hand on this side, hold it down because the awning's wanting to go up. So hold it down with your left hand, bring your right hand up, put the support arm in place, and then grab it low and lock it in, just like that. And that's, that's all it takes. Now, if you try to pull it up here, you're gonna put tension on the outer sleeve here onto the inner sleeve, and you're not gonna be able to put it in, and I'll show what that's like. Like, I can try as hard as I want to, it's not gonna go in, but if I come down here, it goes right in place. That's fairly easy, right? And then to put the awning, to raise the awning, you're gonna pull out with your, in this case, right hand. Left hand's gonna be on the actual awning. And you're gonna pull that out and then just lift up. That's it. And then to lower this, you can actually use the binding between the inner arm and the outer arm to keep it from coming down too fast. So I'm just gonna use that by lifting up a little bit and just control how fast it comes down until it's down. And then to put it away, same thing, you're gonna hold it down. You'll pull the little, whatever that is, button. Put this back into home. Then we're gonna go over to the other side. And take this, now this one was already loose, so I didn't have to pop it. We'll put it back in home. So it's home position and then Come to the middle, grab your awning arm, and just slowly let it go up into place. And that's it. It's fairly easy to do. It's really not that bad. And I like, personally like the manual awning because with the manual awning, there's really just not much to go wrong with it it's for the most part just gonna work. We actually had someone come in not too long ago with the 70s, uh, I think it was Safari, and we replaced their, their Zipti manual awning for the first time from the 70s. They had it all that time and didn't have to replace it. So this has the optional rear hatch and it is, oh, it's already unlocked. But anyway, so it's a $7,500 option I will say people who want this really, really want it. It gives you the ability to have, you know, the outside come in. You can also move the table if you want to and use this for storage. I'm, I personally don't know that I want to put like a canoe in here, but you could do that, especially like, you know, if it's raining and you got to pack up, you got to have the canoe going in there. You have a buck screen so you can close the buck screen and have, again, this open. Like today would be a nice day to have you know, the hatch is like, it's not hot, it's not cold. It's probably getting warm inside the coach. You can just open this and let so much air go through. And then to close it, you can close it there. And then it kind of feels like you're locking and unlocking a vault door. And there is a key outside. And this is the only way to lock this door is from the outside. And that is a unique key just to this lock here. You won't see that. that, that key won't be used anywhere else. And then we do have some bumper storage. Now I consider this just to be basically wet storage. So I put things like chalks uh, and we have an extra hose that we put in there. I store my awning arm in there as well because I'm pretty much always outside when I need it. And the little cover here, you only get from the factory if you get the hatch, but that is something we sell out of the parts department. So you could get that and add it on if you wanted to. Now we do have LED backup lights, LED uh, 
license plate light, as well as a standard backup camera. And all of your markers are gonna be LED lights as well on the Airstreams. Coming around to the business side of the coach, you're gonna have your furnace there. That's the propane furnace. You do have heat pumps in both ACs uh, on the Flying Cloud and all of the, uh, basically everything but the Bambi. Bambi will have a heat strip, strip. And then you have, in 2024 starting, you've got the coax cable, the new Cat6 input for things like Starlink. And below that, you're gonna have your 50 amp smart, lead, uh, smart plug plug. Now, if you don't have two ACs, this will just be a 30 amp instead of 50 amp. But you get the 50 when you go to two ACs. Now, both of these windows will open. This front window will also open. That's in the bedroom area and the window on the other side. Now, for some reason, this particular coach, as we mentioned in the first video, does not have the optional uh, window awning package. Now, that is something I could easily add on here if you wanted it. And if you didn't mind, then you're just... That's not part of the MSRP, so this will be a little bit cheaper. Now, we do have the city fill here. That does have a pressure regulator built in. You've got your black tank flush right here. Now, with the black tank flush, remember, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So every time you go camping, use your black tank flush to clean the, clean the tank out. And then behind this door is going to be your gravity-fed potable water fill. So this will fill your freshwater tank. And you do have an outside shower, hot and cold water there. And then underneath, you're going to have your gray and black tank dump valve. It's right here. You also have a little light there that will occasionally turn itself on. Now, always pull the black first and then the gray. Black is going to be everything that goes through the commode. Gray is going to be everything that goes through the shower and sinks, those types of things. So that will be basically just um, soapy water. So that will wash out your hose before you leave and then for just for it a little bit you should have a storage for your sewer hose so you have somewhere to put that that is designated for the sewer hose and then we have our third outside storage compartment which is where i kind of put all of my tools and my camper is kind of my spot to put things i put my uh, stabilizer arms in there and we're not towing uh, my drill all that kind of stuff goes into there that's that part there. And of course, you've got the new really nice looking flying cloud emblem on the side of your flying cloud. And I'll show you the top here. This one does have, we'll show it towards the end of the video, the whole roof does have the optional 300 watt solar package. And this has the optional second AC as well. So it'll be a 15,000 BTU AC on the front area, living area, and a 13.5 over the bedroom area and then both of those have the heat pump built in so you have the heat pump and a traditional propane furnace uh, underneath as well and it does have a fully enclosed heated underbelly you should have saw that when laura was down there showing you the axles and stuff and there the furnace does push uh, heat down into that underbelly as well to keep that warm when you're camping in the colder climates so that is the outside of the 2024 flying cloud 25 front bed we're gonna move to the inside now. Okay, we're gonna move inside, but as we move inside, I wanna talk about the door a little bit. So Airstream, it takes them about eight hours, generally, to build this door. The screen door is actually gonna be built to mirror or to match this door here. So they build these together. Now on the screen door, you're gonna have, so six welds on each side, so a total of 12 welds. And then you have, of course, a little door to close it. There's a new handle now for 2024, which is really nice compared to what we have on ours. I bet we can upgrade this. Anyway, I wanna try to upgrade that one day. And then you're gonna have, oh, this has the old block. I haven't talked about the 2024.5 yet. I need to do that. That'll be a video coming soon. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. And we've got this really kind of um, just blank spot here. So you could put anything here you wanted to design, have the, the country and put all of your little states that you've been to. Um, that's the most uninteresting looking part of the whole unit, I think. Wouldn't you agree? Laura says yes. You've got the screen door that goes over it. No? So you don't see it. That's okay. And then this is the vault door of the RV industry. So when you shut this door, 
you actually want to shut it with some force like that because if you don't look at this camper here so this one looks like it's shut but it's not that's shut because you can shut just kind of like one click that's just kind of the first click of the vault door and then you got the second click of the vault door so you want to make sure you give it a good good shut good push so it shuts i'm gonna let laura go in first now walking into the flying cloud as far as color options go you're gonna have two options the options really you're only changing the seat cover so you've got the seattle mist which is going to be kind of a gray color almost a muted gray and then carolina clay is going to be kind of an off-white kind of not brown but in between kind of off-white and brown we'll throw up some photos of that so you can see both of those side by side now with this being the hatch we're going to have the stand alone table i guess you would call this with legs that remove now this table will go down to make into a bed if you want to do that and then you can see the hatch there the hatch is going to stick out a little bit we talked about this a little bit in the short video that if you're leaning up against this wall you are going to be leaning against the hatch there there's something to to take into consideration when you're deciding whether you want the hatch and which options you want to get now up front we're going to have some really good storage up here that does pass through behind right there and there's not anything here as far as dvd players or anything like that so this is all going to be open now you do have some connections here you're going to have a usb that goes to the back of the radio you have an inverted power circuit uh, for plugging anything in like an apple tv or a roku and then you have your hdmi and your cat 6 which is the cat 6 that was outside when i showed you that and then this is going to be your hd antenna there's also just so you know a red light on that uh actual dish up there and at night when it's on it will glow red that's what that is and then this is just giving you access to the back of the radio in this back storage area here where there's a lot of wiring and then underneath you are going to have a center light for your dinette you also have reading lights right here and there are speakers that shoot straight down those are going to fire straight down one, one of my probably negatives i think these should be up kind of up here instead of underneath so they're not shooting straight down on top of you but you do have radios you have a radio that does play fm am and you do have bluetooth capabilities with this jail audio radio as well uh, there is power underneath the dinette on this side here that's going to be an inverted circuit on the non-hatch it's just going to be on the back wall there but you do have that power still and then there is some storage Right there, Laura's going to pull down for us underneath there. And then you've got a pull-out drawer here, which is nice, nice and deep, full extension so you can get all the way in. And then there's a little bit of shoe storage right here in this area. And that's your pack that comes with it. So every, every new Airstream should have a pack. Um, and then you do have a kind of with the 25-foot flying cloud, so you go from the 23 to the 25, you're gonna have this nice couch here for you know, entertaining, lounging, and then you have a dinette as well. On the 23 foot, you just have that U-shaped dinette. So a big reason for why you might go from the 23 foot to the 25 foot is really this area here is what would be the reason to make that change, um, to have this. And as far as the dinette goes, I mean, there's plenty of room here to, to sit for, you definitely sit for here, which is what this is designed for. And of course, this table goes down, and we'll show you how that works right now. This is the hardest part. They get that to come up. So I saw Patrick do it the other day. Probably shouldn't say that on my YouTube. That's what he did. So now that's much easier okay so this just kind of goes oh wait let's kind of put it somewhere right, right there it'll be fine and then these just kind of unscrew and there's a little t t screw there and that's what's going to go down into here to connect it and you just turn that to tighten it in place and then the opposite way to pull it out 
that. And then these go in the wardrobe. And they can store just like that. <laughs> Those are tight. Definitely not going to come out when you're traveling. I'm just going to set these over here for now. And then the table will slide underneath like that. My jacket. And then your back cushions are what go in place here. To make it a bed and then these support cushions basically just to make the seat a little bit thicker can go underneath right there and then you'll have one of your bed areas that would be the dinette now this is like there's ton i mean huge space here so if you have taller kids they can definitely sleep there or taller grandkids they can sleep there for sure and then this bed you're going to pull these out right there grab this and they go right there right there now i like to pull the bigger cushions out because they've got some weight to them and they won't just flip off instead of using the smaller cushions. Now you can see just how big this space can be for sleeping. And this will definitely be a two sleeping spot because I mean, there's a ton of room there and I'm not even, like I'm not up against the wall. I could go further. So I can go all the way over there. And like my feet are not even down there. So you can easily have someone sleeping that way and then two people sleeping here. Now on the non-hatch version, you can really fit two there, but I think it's a little bit harder to fit two there with the hatch there. So this will probably be one and you've got two here, but plenty, plenty of sleeping. So technically speaking, this is going to sleep six people. So you would have two in the bedroom area, two there, and two there. With the hatch, I would say it's a five sleeper because that's a little small, a little skinny for two people to be there. And then I would say you're probably, I mean, you can, I mean if two adults could probably fit there. So it probably is truly a five, you know, six sleeper in that sense. At least two there, maybe one adult there, two adults there. So you could do it. Now I like this one here because if you use this versus the dinette, you can still use the dinette as a dinette when somebody's sleeping here. So that's one of the things that is nice about that. So to put this away, pull these back up. Push those forward. Grab our little spacer. Right there. And then there. Right there. And then pull this one up, pull that up. And we need to pull the table out. We can just set that over here for now. Small one goes to that side. Big one goes to this side. Not back in place. Grab our table legs. Now, if this isn't all the way out, so let's say it's like halfway in, it won't go down far enough to swing beneath this piece of metal here. So you want to make sure this is all the way out like that. And it will then go right in place. And now you can take your table, bring it right over. Mm 
And that's it. That's all, that's all it takes to do the dinette. Okay. Put that back. And there, there we go. And we're all back to normal. So you can sleep five here in the 25 foot or the 27 foot. Now under here, you're gonna have some more storage. The bins do come with it. And that's essentially your living space other than the 12 volt TV. So we do have the 12 volt TV right here. For starting in 2024, it went to a smart TV. So it's a 12 volt smart TV. You do still have your inverted circuit right here, which is not really being used anymore because it's a 12 volt TV. And then your HDMI, your coaxial input, and then just the spot for the power to come through. That's right there. And then moving to the kitchen area, you're gonna have a surface mounted stainless steel sink that is dampened. So it will be a little bit quiet as you put things in there. And then you do get the cover that is can be a cutting board if you wanna use it as that. And then you've got your residential style faucet that does turn and then has the little thing that comes out. Underneath, you're gonna have your trash can and then some storage areas and it does pass through which Laura likes to point out, which is really nice that you can get to both sides of that storage when you need to access it. And the 25, you're gonna have a little bit less surface space here, counter space. If you go to the 27, you actually have more counter space in this area here, but you do have drawers with silver storage there. And then total of three drawers that pull out and a little bit of storage right here. You've got the convection microwave, which is an option. The standard setup for the Flying Cloud is gonna be a oven here, but no microwave at all. So if you don't do the convection microwave, you're not gonna have a microwave. Uh, if you do just the propane oven, you can use that propane oven off grid. So that's why you might wanna do that. And then we do have the three burner stove top. The glass will act as a little backsplash there. Now you do want to make sure this cools off before you close this because it will shatter that glass and you want to always travel with this down, not up. And then we do have a fan above that does exhaust to the outside. And of course there's a light there to be able to see what you're working on. And then above the kitchen area, you're going to have two more storage compartments, which we're currently using for a little bit of storage of our bags, but good storage up here. And there's a lip there so you can put things here and keep them from coming out. And then we do have the pullout pantry. These shelves are adjustable. There is a little storage underneath there. If you want to use that for, you know, hide your cereal, hide your cookies. And then above that is going to be your cereal storage for breakfast. And we have our control center for the flying cloud right here. So we're going to have our sea level two uh, monitoring system with the uh, water pump right there, which you can see battery, fresh water, gray, black, you know, power here. This is going to be the controls to turn your inverter on and off and then your solar charge controller you can see we're pulling in almost 100 watts right now which really the solar is probably just covering the draw that we have with having all the lights on because we are running the lights off the battery right now now you may see this number change you may even see it in the middle of the day at zero and the batteries are at 100 um, percent it's not going to have anywhere to send power so it won't be drawing any power in um, and then whatever the max amount it could possibly take in, which would be 300 watts, you may see that. Now, opposing the kitchen area, you're gonna have your eight cubic foot refrigerator. This is a 12 volt refrigerator. Uh, it's a compressor style refrigerator, which the benefit to that is gonna be one, this will cool down in about 45 minutes uh, compared to your old propane system that would take uh, seven, eight hours to cool down. It's also running off the 12 volt. And from what we're being told, what Airstream's actually told me, this pulls about the same amount of power off the batteries as the old propane refrigerator did when it was running off of propane, which is just crazy to think about. You have a big freezer above, you have your refrigerator below with some drawers that pull out right there. You do only get two shelves here. I think in the book it shows with three, but there's only two. That's how they all come. 
And above, we're gonna have that storage without the door that, you know, it will just fall if you let it go. And then below, there's a little bit more storage there. Now you got the wheel wells behind both of these sides. So that's why the storage is so thin, if you're wondering. And then as we move back, you're gonna see the wardrobe, which you've already seen. A nice size wardrobe. It is a single wardrobe. If you want the double wardrobe, that would be the 27 foot front bed um, that you would go to to get the do double wardrobe and you get a little bit more storage in the kitchen area. Uh, we have a few things stored in there. It's where we usually keep the awning arm and stuff until uh, someone takes this home. And then beside the wardrobe, you're gonna have your shower. And it's pretty much the same shower in all of the Airstreams. Uh, there's plenty of room. I fit in here. I'm five foot nine ish with shoes on, probably five ten. I've got plenty of room above. I can sit down if I need to. If I'm really tall, that seat is there for sitting down or shaving legs, as Laura likes to always tell us. And then you do have the shower head that moves around, so you don't have to just rely on that pointing at you. And then you do have the little string that comes across to be able to hang uh, lighter things. You wouldn't want to put anything too heavy on that. There's uh, probably, what, a five or six inch step in to get into the shower. And then this is a true glass door. And you do have a travel lock that you can unlock from the inside and the outside so your partner can't lock you into the shower, which is probably important. And then opposing that, so this is a split bath. And if you're wondering why Airstreams do split baths, it's because you get panoramic windows in the front and you get panoramic windows in the back. If we put a bathroom back here, you wouldn't have the panoramic windows. That's why they do the split bath because it allows them to have the panoramic on both sides. Just open the door all the way. And now we'll move into the bathroom. So you have a nice size bathroom for the 25. There is plenty of room to be able to sit down on the commode. The toilet paper holder is right here, right there. And then there are some stores there. Now they used to have doors down here in this area. That's now just open with no doors. And we've got some storage underneath the sink right there. You'll have another surface mounted stainless steel sink that is dampened. You've got your control for your tankless hot water heater right here. Now the way this is set up to use you want to set this temperature to the desired shower temperature. And then you're just going to basically turn your hot water, you turn your uh, faucet all the way to hot and then let it run that way. This is not going to create enough heat for you to mix it with cold and hot. So don't, don't set this and then try to mix it. You're going to set this starting at probably 121 and then go from there up or down. We've got a spot for your hand towel, right? Yep, hand towel. And then there is storage above right there. So storage here and storage here. And then we have a towel rack right there. The good size bathroom, it works. And then the interesting thing is the bathroom doesn't really change whether you're doing a 27 foot or 25 foot. It's pretty much the same bathroom and the same shower. You're gonna see the improvements everywhere else as far as length goes. Now in the bedroom area, this is the twin bed. Uh, we'll show the queen bed here in a second. Uh, we'll pop that in uh, so you can see what that looks like and the difference there. But on the twin bed, what's nice about this, and I really feel like on the 25 foot and the 23 foot, the twin bed is almost a must uh, because you can really easily get up. And what I mean is if I lay down on this bed, I can lay down here, which feels a little bit weird because this is Laura's side of the camper. I can lay here and I can easily at night, I can easily get up go to the bathroom, you go take a shower, whatever, you know, take a shower, whatever, go and make coffee, whatever I need to do. Versus the queen bed, if you're on this side, you've got to get up and go around. And I have a really good video that compares the twin bed and the queen bed. Uh, we'll link that above so you can go take a look at that. And I'll show you a 27 foot comparison and a 25 foot comparison. Now these boxes that you're seeing everywhere, this is gonna be your um, pillows, your comforters, um, not sheets. There's no sheets that come with it. And then this has the front bunk option. Uh, it is an option. It holds 200 pounds. Um, be great for 
nice smaller grandkid, you know, somebody under 200 pounds. Now, actually up here is a little bit small, even though it holds 200 pounds. This, I wouldn't consider this to be a huge area. So you definitely want to take a look at this in person. But if you got this because you have, say, a grandkid, you can still use this for storage. You could pull the mattress out and have containers up there or leave the mattress in and have containers up here for storage. But you do have the locker here, so you're not completely losing all of your lockers. But if you go for the non um, front bunk option, you get lockers here at the front and this extra locker here. And then right to this side, you're going to have one more wardrobe, which you will also have on the queen bed. So you don't lose this on the twin bed or the queen bed. But on the queen bed, you do get a couple of more uh, drawers down here. We'll show you that as well. Now, this is basically my storage area right here. It's what I get. And I get about half of this front compartment when you have the compartment. The rest of it is Laura's, if you're wondering, guys, what you're going to get. Now, we do have storage underneath right there with the container that pulls out and then we have storage on this side as well and these containers also pull out lots of extra storage you're kind of splitting your storage under the bed so you're going to have some of it is going to be inside and some of it is going to be outside and then some of it is going to be uh, components that run the various things inside the coach then we've got the nice center um, nightstand with a big drawer i love this drawer here um, I think that's another thing for me that almost makes the twin bed make sense. Now you're going to have USB on both sides as Laura's showing you. And you do have power right there in the middle if you need to use uh, power at night. Now one thing I would like to see Airstream change. Um, and I'll, if I ever get the opportunity, I'll tell them. This power should be the inverted circuit. And then the front one here. So you do have an inverted circuit here. But that's not in a good place for something like a CPAP machine. You, you, couldn't, you wouldn't want to put it, necessarily plug it in there. But that is an inverted circuit. It would be really nice if they make that the inverted circuit. Now with the bunk, you do have this ladder that stows underneath. Right there. And we do have speakers underneath. And we have reading lights underneath as well. Now this center window will open. That's the one that you need to open the solar guard on. The window that's on that side will open and the larger window on the camps or the, um, I think road side is what they call it, will open as well. And you do have dimming lights all throughout. And then your switch is there. Now this has the GE, the new GE AC. You see one of the controllers there. There's actually another one in the front. So this is unique to the Flying Cloud in the International for 2024. Instead of having one thermostat for both ACs, you're gonna have two thermostats, one for each AC. Now it is the new GE AC, and I have a video where I talk all about the new GE AC. We can link that above as well. Um, it is new for 2024. Now they do give you a nicer um, filter up in the intake for or the return for the AC on the new one, but that's gonna be going up into the new GE AC. What I can tell you about it so far is it seems to be more efficient compared to the outgoing Dometic. Now, they haven't stopped using Dometic. We're still using Dometic on the Caravel and the Bambi, but we're not using it on the Flying Cloud or International anymore. Uh, it does seem to be uh, more efficient. It's also bigger. It's a just bigger footprint. You can see that in that video I mentioned. Now, it is a truly ducted system, so air is going to come out and be distributed throughout the whole coach and you've got your return here now the actual ac unit is going to be sitting more like right here not directly above and the reason for that is the more turns you can put in air the quieter the air moves if it's just going straight up into the unit that's going to be your loudest ac possible and if you have the ability to do some duck and actually have it move around a little bit it'll be a lot quieter um, now this has the two ACs, so this will be the 13.5 here, and then you got your 15 up front, which have which will have its own controller. And forward there, you're going to also have a really nice sunlight, right? Skylight. skylight. Man, I say that wrong every time. Skylight, and then we also have a new Max Air fan in the Flying Cloud as well with the rain sensor, which is really nice. That's a huge upgrade for uh, 2024. Now, if you don't get the second ac up here you're gonna have another fantastic fan up front 
not, and not the AC. So that's what they put in that hole is a fantastic fan. So that is the inside of the, oh, well, I want to uh, need to mention too, you do have the new composite floor that started somewhere around 2021, 2022. So there's no wood in the floor. That is a one sheet composite. Um, it goes all the way down. There's no seams, it's seamless. And one of the things that's really cool that Airstream is doing now with this floor, they are uh, using a CNC machine to go and pre-drill all of the holes for wherever, you know, it, anything that bolts through or screws into the floor, it, they use a CNC machine to cut out the floor and to drill all the holes, which is really cool. And that's also the case for all of your aluminum walls. So like all of these, all of these um, holes here are all now done with a CNC machine. So they're very consistent on where, you know, where those holes are. Now we also have a new front cap and rear cap of 2024 and a new roof line for 2024. Uh, essentially the front cap has now got more support in it, which will help a front end separation. As, as well as the rear cap has more support in it as well. And then you have a straight kind of line across the roof. And I'll show you that on the roof once we get up top here in a second. But I also have a video that just talks about the roof and Laura can link that above as well. Um, so that's the inside. Let's move to the outside and we'll take a look at the roof and then we'll be done. Okay, we are up on top of the 25 foot flying cloud. And you can see two of your solar panels right here on the back and then there's one more up there towards the front as you can see right there and you've got your two ge uh, profile so low profile ac units that forward one is going to be the 13.5 that's going to be your 15 right there you've got your skylight and then that fantastic fan it does have the hooks already in place to add the fantastic fan cover if you want to do that let me go around to the front and we'll show you what it looks like from the front um, now before i do that you can see the white coating that is a baked on enamel coating to help with uh, sun heat solar heat that's coming in and then also as i mentioned on the inside you've got the new front cap so this front cap is going to be quite a bit more rounded than the 2023s and before and then you only have one seal going across here as opposed to two seals uh, which is what we had on the 23s. Now, I don't see one around here, but they called that the bubble. That was part of the um, what they needed to do to add the ducted AC system back in 2015. Let me move around to the front. We'll take a look from that side. Okay, so I'm on the front side, all, the other side as well. There's that one solar panel. That makes up three your 300 watts. There's room. They could totally do a fourth solar panel here, and I think that should be an option that Airstream does in the future. They are not currently doing that as an option. Now we could add that, that's something we could probably add here if you wanted to have that. It's not necessary um, to really do that. The 300 watts does work really well um, for basically maintaining draw for LED lights and the refrigerator, even the TVs. Um, that is showing you the top of the roof right there. All right, folks, if you've made it to this point in the video, I just wanna first say thank you for watching this video of the 2024 Flying Cloud 25 front bed. Uh, remember, we do have the short video. If you want to go check that out, we'll link that above somewhere and down in the description. Also, if you in if you are in the market for Airstream, be sure to reach out to me. Um, you can buy your Airstream for me if you want to. Um, we'll give you the best price we can possibly give you and the most for the trade that we can give you. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can leave those in the comments. You can shoot me an email or a text. All of my contact info is in the description below. Now, I hope you guys are having a good week. You live riveted and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.